Good evening and welcome to Bent TV. Tonight we begin with Quedia, where we hear from Alexander O. Montgomery about his book True Confessions of a Potato Queen. And in between the sheets, Dean asks the question why we don't see condoms promoted as much as we used to. And to finish tonight, being proper with Lisa Skye, where tonight's topic is etiquette and what not, with guests Hunter and Erin. Good evening, my name is Steve Pereira and welcome to Quedia on Ben TV, where we explore all things art and most things culture. The issue of race, ethnic identity, and sexual attraction is a very interesting, hmm, yes, that word, interesting, a very interesting issue and has been a particularly interesting hmm again when played out in the queer community. We've heard of curry queens, which usually refers to white Caucasian men who like brown men, specifically South Asians. And there are rice queens, Caucasian men who crave East, Indian, East Asian men. And there are variations on those for all races. But what about ethnic men who only date Caucasian men? What about them indeed? Meet Alexander O. Montgomery, a bodybuilding, astronomy-loving millionaire entrepreneur, have to ask him about that, who has just penned the salacious true confessions of a potato queen, the confessions of an Asian man who claims that he only dates Caucasian men. Dare I go there? I dare indeed. Welcome, Alexander O. Montgomery. Hello, Steve. How are you? I'm very well. Thank you for being here. Well, thank you. So fabulous. Thank you. So what's with this potato munching? <laughs> well, it's just a label that wasn't coined by me, um, but it's actually in uh, a gay Asian male who will only date um, Caucasian men. And that's me. So I'm a potato queen and I'm a big one, actually. A self-declared potato queen. So you're, are you proud of that label? Is there something yes, of you, course. You, why, why would you be proud of that? See, because I strongly believe that in life you've got to own what you are and that actually puts you in a much better place. A lot of people that I've actually known of um, through my research and mates and all that who are Asians, they are obviously potato queens, but they, they just don't want to own it, you know, but they consistently date white guys. And when I ask them, like, you must be a potato queen, they go, no, 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 I'm not. I'm open to all. Oh, come on. So within the Asian community, within the East Asian community, largely, what is there any connotation? What, what's, what's a, if you only date white men? Yeah. Is it admired, looked down on? What's, what's the context? How do people respond to that? Okay, so first of all, I would say all gay Asian guys, they would feel really jealous, intensely jealous of you if you've got a white boyfriend, because... That's a pretty big statement to say that yes, all Asian men... Yes, well, I would say majority, OK, mm. I correct myself, majority of gay Asian guys, they would secretly feel jealous that you've got a white, you know, boyfriend. Because I think in this day and age, the white race is still considered to be the superior one, despite what many people would say. Um, but another group of people in the community, they would go, oh, you know, you're just a gold digging person, you know, or you just hate yourself, like you've got problems, so, yeah. But you answer that historically for those of us who come from ethnic minorities, yeah. th who've been taught for generations and generations that being brown and round and curly haired and stub nosed yeah. is not attractive, that you're only attractive if you're blonde and blue eyed. Yeah. That this kind of rhetoric kind of feeds in into that racist yep. type of ideology. Where, how does that sit with you? Where does that... Okay, I'm sorry to correct you there, Steve, but I do not consider that to be racist. I would say that's a preference, and it's my preference. Um, I find you gorgeous, really. You've got beautiful olive mm. brown skin, you're just gorgeous, but I would be attracted to a white person, and I think that's my preference. It's just like, I prefer seafood over meat, so... And that's that's one of the interest, interesting, that word again, but one of the, 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 the contradictions of our, is that we all have desires and we yeah. all have desires. So the, one of the issues for us is understanding where those desires come from. Yeah. And historically, it's because we've been told that we're not attractive. The only way you can be attractive yeah. and the only thing that's worthy of, of being attracted to is somebody who's white and blue eyed. Yes. And so the difficulty in, in our day to day is, is what is to differentiate from what our innate desires are yeah. as to what we've inherited because of our historical baggage. Yeah. 
And so, and, but understand, understand the quandary between the two of them is that this is, is this what I really want or is this something that I've been taught to want? No, not at all. Um, through my personal experience, mm. I've been very attracted to white people from mm. as far back as I can remember because I was actually brought up in a church. So, and that's one of the things you talk about yes. You've, uh, in a Christian background as yes. well. But you talk about being attracted to the pastors who came into the church. I know. As well. <laughs> that's sinful. <laughs> very sinful. But also very exotifying and very electrifying because you always want something that we can't have. Yeah. And that actually brings back to your previous point. Mm -hmm. It's not something that was cultivated. Mm -hmm. It's something that was, for me personally, uncontrolled. So I wasn't brought up in a way whereby people would say, oh, the white race is more beautiful, you're ugly. No, do I look ugly? I think I look great. So it's not about, I have no, you know, some people would say, oh, you hate yourself, you've got no self-confidence. No, that's not me, mate. It's about, you know, just desire, you know, like how would you, what turns you on, mm. basically. So with, you, with your friends, if they front up with an Asian partner, yeah. or God forbid, a black partner, like, what, is there a gradation in race then? Is there? No, good for them, you know. So if somebody shows up with a non-white partner, yeah. if somebody shows up with a white partner, they're, they're really celebrated because they, they managed to catch somebody who's white. Yes. If, if somebody else shows up at the same party with, a, with another Asian partner, would they be as well? Okay, well, Steve, that's a very good question, actually, because it really depends on who you are. Like for mm. me, for example, mm. through my personal experience, if I actually am with a white partner, when we actually go out on dates and all of that, mm. when people do not know who I am, not to say that I'm somebody, but I get sightline all the time, like I don't get service. The white person gets served first. Mm before I even open my mouth, they would, you know, come to the conclusion that I don't speak English. So it's all about stereotyping and um, people being very judgmental. So what, with your book, what are you hoping to get from it? Who do you, who do you hope will read your, your book? With a quite fabulously photoshopped? Oh, 10 times over, yes. Ten times over. <laughs> I'm glad you did it. Duh. <laughs> oh, come on, you are gorgeous. Thank you. Uh, so who, 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 are you, who do you expect to read this book? Well. I strongly believe that knowledge is power mm -hmm. and this is educational. Um, I would say um, to the community, to society at large and to also educate the LGBT community as well. Fantastic. Where can people find your book? Well, it's available online. It's in a national library. If you don't want to buy it, go into the library and borrow it. That's right. I think we should all have a look at this book because it deals with some really interesting issues, obviously issues that I have, I have issues with. But thank you so much, Alexander, for being <laughs> with us. It's all very much part of the dialogue and that we had. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you for being here and thank you for writing the book. I'm Steve Pereira. You've been watching Ben TV. Thank you for watching. We'll be back. Between the Sheets, where I get some friends to jump into bed with me and we talk about some issues that are currently going on in our queer world. Tonight, I've got Stephen, Davey and Jesse. And guys, what I wanted to talk about tonight was condoms. Why don't we talk about them anymore? Well, we've been talking to them about them for about 30 years now. Um, and if you ask me, we've been talking about them and only them as the only option. Whereas now I think that the conversation has just become a bit more diversified. We've got these wonderful, you know, we're wonderful creatures, humans. We innovate, we have science and technology. Um, we now have many more options for us to choose um, uh, to protect ourselves from HIV. And you know, that, these new tools are what we're gonna see end the epidemic. Well, this is true. Like we've got things, there's Travada and things like that. But, mm -hmm. but you know, we've had, as gay men, we've had condoms in gay bars and posters up everywhere. And I've seen them all of my queer life. And now I'm just noticing ones that talk about PrEP and things like that. And I'm just wondering, why can't we have more than one tool to prevent us, ourselves from, you know, STIs and sexually transmitted diseases? And because there are more options, isn't it interesting that we're just focusing on one thing at a time in the conversation? Well, it was interesting, picking on you, but you specifically pointed out HIV. And 
in terms of everything you can get from unprotected sex, I am most worried about syphilis because I'm allergic to penicillin, mm -hmm. which means if I get syphilis, it is extremely difficult for me to treat it. Mm -hmm. So that is always, if I mess around with anybody, whatever I do, I always make sure, are you lying to me? And I'm sure they think I'm crazy asking them like five, six, seven times, but it is very important that I don't get syphilis. Mm -hmm. Well, so do you feel like uh, we have changed in the way in which we talk about STIs and communicate about them? Because I feel like there's a much more open dialogue and conversation now when it comes to it. There is for me, anyway. I mean, uh, and I, the reason why I wanted to talk about this topic is because I haven't seen any promotion for condoms. I, I don't see condoms anymore. I, it, it used to be you would leave a gay bar and there'd be a bucket of condoms and you could grab it if you had that need. But also if you didn't, it was a good way to be aware and to understand your sexual health without having information thrust at you. In changing to the social media age that we now live in, do you think that's changed the way we communicate about sexual health prevention? Well, I like the notion of having a bucket of prep at the door. Wouldn't that be fun? At the bar, <laughs> yep. <laughs> you know, they call it a party drug, and my goodness, if we had it out there in those numbers, we'd see. But in fairness, if you've got to take prep the right way, and yes, that's you possibly do, and not I would going not, to be the way yeah, to take prep. Don't, don't do right. that. <laughs> Don't do that. But We're I do not think advocating that, the, that. <laughs> <laughs> um, the conversation around STIs has become much clearer. People are viewing them as they are, and people are actually becoming more realistic. People are realizing that, unless in very specific circumstances, they are all treatable. There's a cure for Hep C. It's all very, very possible. Like it's all very possible to S STIs aren't uh, don't have a huge impact generally for most people. Now, um, what, the only reason why condoms came about in the gay population, the queer population, were, were because of for contraception and then for HIV AIDS when the AIDS crisis started. That's when came they about. exploded. That's when yeah. they exploded, definitely. Now we're coming to the end of that cycle, and so we have to reimagine a world where we don't necessarily have this, you know, dire cloud HIV AIDS over our head anymore and sort of view, all right, well, where do we go from here? Am I comfortable with getting three gonorrhea jabs a year? <laughs> yeah, I am. Um, <laughs> but don't you think that leads to a greater symptom? I mean, I think one of the problems I see, and I, I, I love everything you've just said, but one of the problems I see within it is the fact that we're constantly jumping from one thing to another. As uh, science has evolved, our understanding of sexual health and gay sexual health and queer sexual health has evolved, our understanding of sexual health prevention has evolved. Why do we need to jump to from one thing to the next? Why can't we communicate everything? Aren't we just growing a stereotype that's, that's letting people still not understand what we're talking about? I personally still feel like a lot of people don't understand enough in relation to condom use. Uh, a lot of us are very learned, you in particular are, and you put a lot of energy and effort into communicating to people all the time. And the reason for that is because people still don't communicate or talk about it or feel comfortable doing that. Mm. And moving on from something onto something else, doesn't that just lead to greater stigma? I've found that, I'm a sweet virginal person of course, but I found that the older guys that I mess around with are always much more condom aware and they always will have them, they will have all of that equipment just ready and okay, oh well I have a condom in my bag, I have it in my pocket. When I mess around with the younger guys, it's usually not the case, it usually ends up being a, do you have one? Oh no, not really. <laughs> well you've got to understand as well that an older gay man has also grown up in a time exactly. that, you know, like if you were it's a, it was a different my world. age, it was a completely different world in, in the 80s and the 90s when HIV grew and, and when it started and, and they, they lived through a very di different epidemic. I, I, for me, it was never an epidemic because that wasn't my experience, but for other people it was. Jesse, you've been very quiet in, <laughs> in the corner of... Um, see, a lot of the points that have come up are about the differences throughout time and because I am someone who was born in 1995, I'm 20 years old. Yes. <laughs> I know, I'm a child. That makes me feel old. <laughs> and I'm with a young one. <laughs> I don't have a lot of, ex I don't have the experience of... Do you think you see a lot of a a promotion for condoms or, or see a lot of I information don't. about condoms? I straight up don't. I personally use condoms every time I have sex. Uh, to me, they're very important. I constantly, I'm always carrying a uh, pack of non-latex condoms in my wallet because they can go in your You're wallet. You're so much more prepared than me already. <laughs> Just in case, um, I personally don't like using them. I prefer using latex condoms, but you know, they can I mean, my greater concern with damaged. condoms isn't actually um, prevention of STIs, which it, it's <clears throat> part of an important fact, but there are a lot of sexual health tools that can be a part of that. My biggest 
reason for using a condom as a chalk top, but you know, <laughs> the way that that goes, you know, you've got to look out for yourself. <laughs> but you've just, just give me a bottle of Mount Franklin. Now. Just <laughs> but you've hit the nail on the head. Where the simple fact is, we have jumped from one sexual health prevention tool to promoting another. Um, I just, I disagree with that. And I, 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 you, well, I feel like the problem <laughs> is that we're not. We're jumping, you, you just said we've jumped away from condoms and jumped. No, away. we need to look at base knowledge level. So we, everyone knows about condoms. The knowledge level about condoms is here. Knowledge level about the other tools is down oh, here. Completely. So we need, to, we need to push that so that there's a bit more equity in what, what people oh. know about it. I... So instead of the massive investment in condom sort of advertising, we're seeing investment in in advertising of these new tools because people don't necessarily know about it. Not everyone's on social media like mm. this is yeah. true. Jesse, you were going to say. But that something? being said, um, like you know, I personally have just recently gone on prep, mm -hmm. and I think it's brilliant. I think it's a fantastic way to keep yourself safe. I don't now that I'm on it. I'm not going to stop using condoms. I'm going to continue that, and because to me it is using both in case one fails. Well, at the end it of is an added protection. Prep, prep doesn't, at the prep end of, doesn't fail. At the end it of failed, the day, it's failed once and that's it's a, very that's, rare. That's a whole conversation. <laughs> Thanks for joining me in bed and maybe you'll be in bed with me next time. Thank you for staying with Pent TV. Please visit our website, Twitter, YouTube channel and Facebook to find the different ways you can support Bent TV, provide feedback and become involved in supporting Bent TV. Back after this break. Hi there, welcome to Being Proper with Lisa Skye. This is a news segment in which uh, I talk with my good friends about etiquette and whatnot. So today I have Erin and Hunter. Welcome. Hello. Howdy. Now, in the spirit of being proper with Lisa Skye, what pronouns do you prefer? No. no. Go on. Not pref well, not preferred preference, not preferred pronouns. It is my pronoun. Okay, see, I, I've heard this before. So I like saying preferred pronouns because I feel like it says what do you prefer rather than what society lumps on you. But I, th I think I need to start using just what are your pronouns. You wouldn't ask a cis person what their preferred pronouns are. And that's what it comes down to. No one asks cis people what their pronouns are. They mm. just go, oh, what are your pronouns? You know, mm. if they ask at all. Yeah. Um, which isn't likely. Which isn't likely in mm. the first place. Uh, there's also the point of asking pronouns in a public place forces people to out themselves, which is not particularly helpful. Yeah. Asking privately is fine, but usually in talking pronouns with people publicly, you're going to want to use context to, to find out what pronouns they use, rather than just asking. Because there's probably a lot of closeted trans people out there who don't want to answer that question. So yeah, that's also Yeah, and it's important to, if we're having a conversation, to, like it's important for us, for me to know what prefer, uh, pronouns Hunter right. uses, but not the guy over there going, oh yeah. Yeah. Thought, Unless he's good looking, in which case that's fine. Yeah. For you. <laughs> for me. And for me, because that's how we are. <laughs> We're the same person. Um, okay, so uh, how would you then navigate that? Because I know it's come a, become a very standard question mm. in queer communities. Um, I mean, I know cis guys who prefer they because of solidarity. Um, which I have mixed feelings about, mm. but I have mixed feelings about most things cis guys say. And, yeah, <laughs> and it's a fairly harmless thing to mm. have, you know, mixed feelings about. Like, they're not really hurting anyone by mm -hmm. doing it. So, yeah, look, it, generally speaking, you just always need to ask in private. You know, public asking publicly just doesn't help anyone. Mm -hmm. And all it does is it forces people to feel like they have to announce their pronouns, which, especially if someone's gender questioning, they might not, might not even know yet yeah. what their pronouns are. And then certainly don't have the argument about they being a pronoun, being yeah. not a pronoun. For those of you listening, reading, watching, listening, for your, those of you using your senses at home, singular they is grammatically correct. It just is. It's in the fucking dictionary now. And it's now. been grammatically correct <laughs> since Shakespeare. Yeah. And you know what else has been? You, no, you know what else has been around <laughs> since Shakespeare, right? The word shiny, right? So if you use the word shiny, then you, you use the singular they. You just use it. It's just, it's polite. It's good. Do you want to wear a hat for a while? Yes, I do. So let's talk about a different etiquette question now. Um, so, you, both of you identify as... Do yes. That is the best thing I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> but 
for some reason, you look like one of those old judges with a Yule log. Oh, fantastic. Yeah, <laughs> just one of those like... <sighs> No more smiling for us. Yes, carry on. Motion carried. Are you, are you are you mocking me? <laughs> no, I love that guy. <laughs> there's, there's a sign in Edinburgh that says, it's like some pub, like the old judgment or something, and he's just got the gladiator eyes. He's like, <clears throat> he's got the judge wig. It's amazing. Excellent. You, you, need, you need one of those, just by the way. So <laughs> I do need a judge wig. Anyway, so uh, you both identify as dominant, yes. as mm -hmm. do I. You both identify as uh, people with chronic illness. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now, around, this is a big around protocol thing. Mm -hmm. um, are there do's and don'ts with having friends with chronic illness? Because I know that I always want to kind of, you know, help and do things, but I don't know if that's a hassle or not. Like if I bring food, is that patronising? Or if I don't do anything, or if I talk about anything else but the illness so they can have a break from it, yep. does that count, look at being callous, you know? Like, what's all that about? Always bring food. <laughs> food is yeah, I mean, always You don't welcome. have to be chronically ill to appreciate that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. like always bring food. Feel free to ask, but mm. don't be offended when I turn around and go, actually, no, I can do it myself. Or in my case, I have someone to do it for me. Mm. Yeah. So... Yes, you're welcome to bring whatever, but I might also want to get you something. Mm. And just because it takes me 10 minutes to get out of the chair to go and do that. Yeah. Yeah. I know I had um, a year, about a year of constant chronic pain um, after a car accident. And um, I just didn't want people to ask about it. Yeah. Mm. And I know that was them being lovely, but there's only so many times you can say, yeah, worst thing that ever happened to me. Every second is pain. You think you get over it. You don't. Yeah. And so I would love people just... And your whole life about... becomes about it. Yeah, and exactly. You don't want that yeah. necessarily. I think what we really need to do is normalise saying no, not just to do you want something, but also I don't want to talk about that. Yeah. And that not being an insult. Mm. Because at the moment if someone says, oh, how is X, Y, Z, and you I don't want to talk about that, people get really offended like you've attacked them for asking. Yeah. And so I think what we really need is for people to go, oh, okay, no worries. How about that? sporting game, you know, or whatever mm. it is that normal people do. Steeplechase. Um, yeah. Mm. Also, please inv keep inviting us out. Yes. Yeah. Just because we say no this time doesn't mean that we don't want to not even, be invited. Even if we've said no the last five times, you know, there's probably a good reason for every single one of those times. So please keep inviting. Yeah. You know, and keep asking, hey, do you want to get coffee? Even if we've said no five times, try again. Mm. Like. I promise you one time we will. Yeah. Eventually. Yeah. yeah, I mean that's that's that goes like with really busy people too. Mm. I just yeah. I, I really want to go out clubbing with my friends, but also I know that that kind of blacks out about forty eight hours because <laughs> Papa likes to party, you know. And it blacks out about forty eight hours for me too. Yeah, you know, for not as fun reasons. <laughs> like, I mean, if I go out, even going out for lunch, yeah, will put me on bed rest for the rest of that day, mm. yeah, and probably for some of the next day. So, you know, and it's usually worth it because I like my friends and I like to see them, mm. but it, it is a, an investment of my time. Yeah. So keep attending, uh, so keep asking you to do things, uh, let you guys do uh, stuff for them, mm. and I guess trust that uh, if you've got friends with chronic illness, trust that they know what's best for them and their body and their limitations. Yeah. Yeah, for the much. love of God, don't recommend yoga. Or to think positive. Or to think positive. You guys are pretty positive. You play a lot of Xbox. I spent too much. <laughs> More <laughs> a PlayStation 3 man myself. <laughs> and, you know, in, in the odd chance there are any doctors watching, stop trying to diagnose me with depression. Like, <laughs> every goddamn time they'll be like, oh, now we need to do a run through a list of, the, you know, the mental health thing. I do not have depression. I don't. They don't like that. Got a whole bunch of other stuff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And, you know, it's, it's ironic that they're constantly offering me support for depression, but my friends with depression aren't getting offered support. Yeah. All righty. So to sum up, uh, I guess this, is, this has been good. This has been very useful. Mm. Um, be discreet and trust that other people communicate and you yourself communicate uh, your wants and needs. Uh, this has been Being Proper with Lisa Sky. Please thank my guests, Hunter and Erin. Thank you, guys, and thank you for watching. That's all the time we have for tonight. Thank you for watching. My name is Gavin Henderson. Please visit our website, YouTube channel, Facebook to keep in contact and support Vent TV.